I look at Indianapolis punching them in the mouth. Punching them in the mouth. You got a, I think it was a hamstring injury uh, uh, to uh, Patrick Vernon. Willis. Oh, uh, yeah. they, they, Vernon Davis couldn't play. And Vernon play. Davis couldn't play. Okay. So, obviously, not having Vernon Davis in the lineup, big. You know, that's a big loss. Yep. Crabtree being out of the lineup all season long thus far, that's a big loss. But still in all, with this defense, with Kaepernick and the weapon he's supposed to be, with a guy like Anquan Bolden, yep. with a Frank Gore coming out of the backfield, you should still be more respectable than seven points. Indianapolis did not beat the San Francisco. Francisco 49ers yesterday. They beat them down. Mm. Okay, they out muscled them. They, they out hustled them. Out it was a man amongst boys. Yep. That's how it looked against yep. them. And I and I I think that's problematic. I didn't expect that yep. from the Indianapolis Colts. I didn't expect that to happen to San Francisco defense. And let's be real about something here. They're having problems. 29 to three, and then 27 to seven. Yeah, you 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 only scored 10 points. In the first two games, but you've also given in the last two I games rather, but you've given up 56. You've been outscored 56 to 10 mm -hmm. in the last two weeks. It's the first two-game losing streak in the Jim Harbaugh area era. I don't like what I'm seeing from this defense. I thought this defense was comparable to Seattle's, but they're getting exposed. Yep. And and people like myself who projected them to be to go to the Super Bowl. Let me be very clear. The only reason I did that is because I, I predicted they would have the best record in the NFC yep. and they would, they would have home field advantage. Let's be clear. If Seattle ends up with home field advantage. It'll be tough. See, no, no, no. Not tough. It's just You're not beating them. They, they, it's over. Nobody's going to Seattle. To be, nobody's beating Seattle in Seattle in the NFC. If Seattle go, has home, court, home field advantage, the Seattle Seahawks are going to the Super Bowl. It is just that simple. In San Francisco, the only way to offset that is by making sure that you win these regular season games. So to lose the last two weeks the way that they have lost, incredibly surprising. Okay. Here's my perspective and my take on what I saw yesterday. I told you and Darren Woodson on Friday, I thought the 49ers got emotionally flattened in Seattle and that they would have a hard time getting up off the mat for yesterday's game, that it was a dangerous game because it was a great spot for Indianapolis. You guys said, no, 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 they will take it out on Indianapolis. Yeah. I know Darren was strong on that. And I said, I have my doubts about that. I believe they came out absolutely dead flat in this game. That wasn't the 49ers as we used to know and love them. I think the Alden Smith situation helped flatten them even more because I, I don't know anything about I don't have any inside knowledge of this, mm -hmm. but I have to believe that the leaders of that football team did not want to go to battle with Alden Smith yesterday. I just believe they wanted a statement to be made by their head coach that enough was enough. They would have united better. They, they would have felt like let's go win this together if he had been told to go on to rehab before yesterday's game, if in fact, as it was reported, he asked to go to rehab on Saturday. I don't know why you go ahead and let him play on Sunday. So I thought it was a psychological blow to the unity of the football team going in. And then at the end of the game, now you have Frank Gore, who was having a day yesterday, but didn't get that many touches. What do you have, 13 total touches? Yeah. Yeah, and he was heard by some... 11. 11 touches. 11 for 82. 11 for 82, but I think he caught it. Did he catch yes, he had 11 for 82, and he caught two passes. Okay, so, so it was 13, 13 touches. Yeah. Okay, so the point was he was overheard by some of the media members, I think Kevin Lynch uh, reported it, that he had some things to say as he went back in the game for the final series about his head coach, mm -hmm. about how he's not being used in this game. So now you've got dissension in the ranks because all of a sudden things are going south in a shocking new direction because Harbaugh doesn't lose two games in a row. You know, the, this is a whole new world for this team. Mm -hmm. So in, in the end, I'm back to Kaepernick, and I think he was a product of a team that came out emotionally flat, but we've been talking about quarterbacks who are feeling themselves. Is he starting to feel himself? Mm -hmm. Every every other advertisement, every every commercial on my TV. Mighty Wings. Right? It's just him, him, <laughs> him. It's cap, 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 cap. All right? I mean, just I can't even name all of them. Right. But but is it starting to go to his head a little bit? No. And he was sensational in the opener against yes. Green Bay. Yes, he was. So, and, and that's a legitimate argument, Skip. Yeah. And I got to tell you, you know, it's a couple of things. First of all, 
Harbaugh had a problem with Alex Smith because even though you came in there and you patted him on the shoulder yeah. and you firmly believed in him, at the same time, obviously, you transitioned to Colin Kaepernick, and that was something that Alex Smith didn't like, and he had yeah. to deal with that situation. You had uh, uh, Vernon Davis, who initially wanted Alex Smith in there before gravitating to Colin Kaepernick. You had Frank Gore wondering about his stature within the team. Yeah. Uh, you had Crabtree at one point in time holding out and ultimately coming on and yeah. you know doing what he did. There have been problems in the Harbaugh era. We just downplayed it because they were winning football games. He's tough as nails. The defense seemed to mirror the personality of their coach, mm -hmm. and that was that. Yep. So now that stuff is coming to light, and now we're seeing that there are flaws in his game, as it is with every coach or whatever the case may be. Doesn't mean he's still not great. Doesn't mean he hasn't accomplished great things. Doesn't mean that I don't believe in him, because I still believe in him. I think he's an outstanding coach, and I think his yeah. upside is tremendous, and I've got no problem with him. But that's not to ignore these problems. Thank you.